Welcome to Drums, 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 Episode 3 with me, Nathan Bonison, as your host. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about my influences, what got me into drumming, and when I started drumming. I always kind of knew I wanted to be a drummer probably as far back as grade 3. I remember we had to make an instrument for a school play, or it was kind of like a presentation, and I wanted to make drums out of pots and pans, but my parents were kind of like, that's not technically making an instrument. So my, uh, my wooden spoon drum set uh, dream kind of got thrown out the window. I believe I made a horn out of an empty paper towel roll, some sparkles, and some feathers, <laughs> which is like kind of ridiculous. I think I walked to one end of the stage and blew it, and then the other end of the stage and blew it. Anyways, my passion didn't stop there. I remember I must have been uh, 14 or 15 and I got my first CDs, um, my own CDs that I picked out because I liked the edgy bands, the new metal stuff. Uh, Slipknot was one of those CDs that I got and I can remember drumming on a phone book until the pages were just obliterated um, while I was listening to some Slipknot songs off of their self-titled album. So I never really let the dream die, even though I wasn't allowed to play that dang pot and pan set that my parents uh, wouldn't let me play way back in grade 3. Um, I think in grade 9, I kind of toyed around with the idea of starting a band with a guy, and uh, I never really thought that I could play the drums after I kind of developed a little more. I was like, oh, that's impossible. You gotta be like born a drummer or something like that, which isn't true at all. You can learn any instrument as long as you take the time to practice it and put the effort into um, excelling in the areas that maybe that you're not so good at. So yeah, I, uh, I ended up playing bass. Most people end up picking bass because they think it's the easier instrument and I believe an instrument's only as easy as you want it to be. Um, so I played that for a little bit, but I always still kind of had the drums in the back of my mind. Even when uh, that band Suppressive Enemy started and I started playing bass in there, I still kind of like um, pursued the idea of playing drums. I got the drummers of the band to kind of show me. We had more than one drummer. Uh, anybody that's in a band knows it's hard to keep a steady set of members going. But anyways, yeah, so I always kind of had people showing me here and there. I'd watch videos, but I never had a place to drum. I never had the money for drums, so I just kind of let, and I never even thought I could do it. I always wanted to do it, but never thought I could do it. So I just kind of let it kind of slide to the back of my mind, and I kept playing bass and uh, playing guitar, learned how to play guitar too. Um, I really excelled at those other instruments, so I, we're going to focus on drums here. So I got my first electronic drum set, which was the DTX Explorer kit. Um, it was a Yamaha electronic kit. You had your, um, your four pads, and you had a kick tower and a kick drum. You had three cymbals, I think, and one of the pads was a hi-hat. Yeah, you didn't have a hi-hat, um, cool, like, mechanism. You had, like, a, um, an analog pedal down there, and it, like, kind of triggered open and closed for this pad that wasn't the shape of the cymbal kind of thing, and then there was definitely some, like, quarter cymbal pads. I believe there was two. There might have been three, though, and that was kind of a cool kit. I learned to do a lot of stuff on that kit. It really helped me do the basics, like keeping one hand doing steady while you got do, 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 you know, kind of like working your way around the kit, keeping the hi-hat going while you do some kick pattern, stuff like that. Um, and then I got my, I never really got my first acoustic kit until just a few years ago, actually. I always played my buddy's dad's kit, which I was fortunate enough to let, uh, to have him let me play. And it came with the cymbals, a pretty pretty budget cymbals, pretty budget kit. It was a Westbury, probably just made out of maple with like some black wrap on it. it was a, uh, it was what it was. It wasn't anything special. The cymbals were some uh, Zildjian ZHT. I think I still have that bad boy. Some Solar hi hats. I think I still have those too. The crash cymbal was like some no name crash cymbal. It's gone. It's uh, scrapped, scrap metal now. I got my first real like live drum experience in my mid-twenties with Edge of Our Youth. Uh, we formed just me and another guy, Christopher Cater, who I still jam with and uh, we still run this channel with. We, uh, we met at a factory where we both worked and we both like found out we had a similar interest with music and that I was learning how to play the drums and he was a great guitar player. He didn't say that, he just turned out to be a great guitar player. He said he, he plays guitar, I might as well come over and play drums on his dad's drum set, so I decided to go check it out and we uh, 
We've been jamming ever since. I think we're going on like eight years now, which is great. We've played hundreds of gigs. We've made thousands of dollars. We're not famous or anything. We're just getting by, and it's just like those those ten dollars there, sixty dollars there, two dollars here. It all it all adds up over the course of almost a decade. Um, but yeah, so I got a lot of my experience jamming with that band live on drums. Although I ended up going over to bass, I've had a lot of experience on bass. My first couple gigs, I believe I was 16, maybe 17, playing a couple gigs live with Suppressive Enemy, which is no longer a band. It was full of a bunch of great dudes. Um, things didn't mesh, you know, life splits people different ways, chaos hits people differently. Um, anyways, yeah, so I ended up back on bass in Edge of Our Youth in my mid-20s after playing, or my later 20s, after playing drums with them for a long time. Uh, we decided to shift it around a bit after cycling through a lot of members, trying to find the right, uh, the right mesh of sound and everything like that. So I ended up playing drums with quite a few other bands, actually. Um, it turns out if you're a drummer and you can do the things that people need you to do, you get hired for a lot of gigs. You might not get paid a lot of money, but you get hired for a lot of gigs uh, around town. So I, I basically said yes to playing bass and drums in almost any opportunity that I could uh, get my hands on that was kind of somewhat prof professional. Where people were making money, they had it down, they were getting together regularly, they were like they were good at what they were doing, you know, they weren't just starting and like, I still need to learn, but I want to make a band and that's great. You guys keep doing that. There's just like, once you get to a certain level, it's like you need to mesh with those people a lot more to make more connections, I suppose. It's like, it's not like we stop jamming with people that are beginners. It's just like, we don't have a lot of time to do that. Not as much as we did in the beginning because we want to continue to be successful and get our names out there and work on our work on our projects and our bands and work on our skills, especially uh, if you're a musician that dives into a lot of instruments, you don't have a lot of extra time because you're practicing everything all the time. You've probably got your own project you've been working on for your whole musical life, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, sorry, we're going to get back on track to the drums. A lot of people have uh, gotten me to play drums with them. I've played drums in a lot of bands. Uh, um, Scream Bloody Murder, Backbreaker, The Boys and I. There's there's lots that I'm leaving out. Uh, Kirsten Corbett, she's, a, she's a, kind of like a pop artist. She's pretty cool. I'm not sure if she's still doing stuff. Bobcat Bartolo, he's still pretty active. Um... There's lots of bands. I play bass in lots of bands, too. But anyways, uh, it, it's been a pretty good run. Drumming for uh, all those bands and all those situations, playing like hundreds of gigs live and making a couple thousand dollars while doing it, Like I, I've, I've learned a lot and I've met a lot of great people. And I feel like I wouldn't be the musician I am today if it wasn't for the, the tips and the tricks and just the inspiration of seeing other people play live and uh, hearing what they have to say. Even... Even behind your back, you know, you catch you catch a couple words, and as long as you don't let it eat you up and get all bent out of shape, you can actually use that criticism to make yourself better. Like, there's tons of times where um, I just bit my tongue. You know, you hear you hear a, a little sly comment behind the curtain or you know around the corner, and you're just like you, you keep to yourself. And uh, if you you got enough willpower, you can actually use that to make yourself better instead of letting it drag you down and making you worse. But anyways. Um, yeah, I've had lots of negative comments, lots of positive comments. You really don't know how to judge yourself in the end. Uh, all you can do is just keep trying. I never think that I'm good enough. I'm always trying to get better, and I know I don't practice enough. Some of my favorite drummers include Andal Herrick. Some of my favorite drummers include Met. Some of my favorite drummers include Andal Herrick and Matt De Deveris from Chimera. Uh, I love Jeremy Taggart, former drummer of Our Lady Peace. Uh, Travis Barker, is ha he has to be one of my favorite drummers because of how much he practices and just gets it all down. He's got the fundamentals down and he practices it so regularly that he could literally do it blindfolded, which any good drummer should do nowadays. He's one of those few drummers you can track live and actually use his takes and mix them down and not really have to slap a bunch of samples over it because he practices enough. And one of my biggest critiques nowadays is like, 
I get it. It's pretty easy. You don't even have to be a drummer to program drums nowadays, but a lot of drummers rely on that, and they don't practice regularly enough uh, to a metronome or even in general to actually be recorded live and have that take used. So um, even if it's a simple four bar measure, you know what I mean? A lot of drummers can't hold it down uh, and keep a steady velocity and a steady beat um, with self-mixing through the entire four bars to have that usable for a loop, let alone in itself. So I really like Travis Barker because he's one of those drummers that really, really gets it down. Um, there's a lot of other drummers I, I know I'm leaving out. I'm kind of drawing a blank here, man. There's a lot of uh, a lot of great, great bands. Animals as Leaders has a killer drummer. Um, Man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sign off there on the drummers because I'm drawing a huge blank. But I really, really, really am inspired by a lot of local guys that I've seen too. Man, oh man! In my town, there are some crazy drummers, and I've, uh, I was lucky enough to be in a jam hall with one of them. Um, they were down the hall from my hall, but I could hear their drummer ripping it sometimes, and he was really inspiring. Um, check them out. They're called Apoc, and they're a technical death metal band. They're really, really sick. Um, in a good way, like like the the heaviest riffs, man, the, the gnarliest stuff. So they've got a great drummer, uh, Greg Cavallero. I can't remember how to pronounce his last name, but his name is Greg, and I call him Greg Pock, Greg Pock from Apoc. Um, yeah, yeah, the C Cathartic Demise has another really great drummer. His name is Angus, uh, Angus Pike. He's great. He's a local guy, too, man. Check these guys out. Cathartic Demise and Apoc, they're great bands. Um, those two drummers are local guys that inspired me. And uh, I find I draw a lot of inspiration from all the music around me. And playing so many shows and going to so many shows has really uh, given me a lot of influence from local artists, which is sweet because there's a lot of music that I don't listen to a lot that I get to, like, really, really get a good taste of through other bands because it's their influences and they they come up with some pretty pretty sick stuff from their influences when it comes to uh, styles of music that I like and that I enjoy to listen to and play along to I like a lot of um, lo-fi kind of like trip hop I do like hip-hop I like jamming to a lot of that kind of stuff with a lot of groove I like jamming to the funky stuff I really like um, I do like jamming to metal too but like in the beginning, I was told by some pretty uh, decent drummers. They were they were pretty good. They weren't they weren't like the best in the world or anything, but they're well known around the cities that I live in, that I've lived in. And uh, they they told me stuff like a lot of metal drummers when they go home, they're not jamming to metal. They're jamming to their favorite jazz albums. They're jamming to their favorite funk albums. They're really honing down and learning their rudiments and stuff like uh, getting that some of that old rock and roll like as as silly as it sounds they have some pretty technical stuff when you're not listening to the four on the floor you know um, if you really dig in and actually listen to what the drums are doing on some of those tracks so uh, I took that to heart and I really started seeing what other music could I jam over I like jamming over ambient music I like jamming over uh, trance music I love jamming over all kinds of stuff it's uh, I like jamming over metal too, absolutely. Give me some slamming riffs, give me some, uh, I like new metal. A lot of people talk the ish about the new metal, but that's okay, man, I, I love it. It's a, it's a good mixture of things that were happening at the time. It might've been a little bit of a niche for some people. It never really went away. It kind of transitioned into that newer wave of music that's like cool as F now with the eight string guitars. It's like, don't tell me that's not like woven in with the new metal. Anyways, I'm not here to argue about genres, but um, those are some of the genres that I really like to kick back to. I do, I like kicking back to some blues, man. I do, I like, I like doing, I like swinging it. Um, I guess I got a lot of that from my electronic drum set, the DTX Explorer made by Yamaha. It was really handy, it was really great for the price. I don't even think they make them anymore. They probably make a um, different model with the same kind of versatility of it. But it was like, it was pretty great because it had a bunch of preset songs of different genres that you could jam to. And I would often find myself jamming, try, trying to jam to some of these songs. Um, I don't have any formal training. I just learned what I learned from videos on the internet and asking people questions. And um, I've sat down with some drummers, so I've taken some personal one-on-one -on -one lessons, but not from like teachers or people that really know how to like explain to you, but they, they know how to make you think, you know? So I, I learned some a lot from some great people and you can learn a lot without spending money on lessons but I freaking highly recommend it 
if you can take lessons for everything don't rely on the lessons but take lessons to learn the fundamentals because you will excel so much faster when you run into some of those roadblocks that maybe uh, somebody that hasn't taken lessons runs into when you take the lessons you hit that roadblock and you use the tools that you gained through the lessons to overcome that hurdle whereas maybe a player that didn't take those lessons it takes them a little longer to acquire that knowledge those tools to overcome that hurdle so I definitely think that lessons would have benefited me a lot and I still I still really would love to take lessons on every instrument that I play because I know that I could always be better and there's always something to learn even the best musician still isn't the best at every genre they're not the best at every style they haven't mastered every technique you know maybe they're pretty good at them all but they haven't mastered them all or maybe they have I don't know Anyways, guys, thanks again for tuning in. This was Drums, 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 Episode 3 with me, Nathan Bonison, and I look forward to seeing you guys again next month.